All right, hello again, everyone. Uh, if you have not heard, which I'm sure you have, uh, the balance update, uh, the first balance update of AOS 4th edition is out. Christmas has come early. I was very worried this was not going to come out until like October and it was going to be very sad. Um, and here it is. So I'm not sad. In fact, I'm great. Uh, figured it's a good time to have a beer and talk about a little bit of Warhammer. So, um, first of all, other people have already made videos. I'm, I'm late to the game, but I want to be one of the cool kids. Um, this will probably be shorter than Honest Wargamer is and, and Stuart Iron Gutsman's. Um, you should go check out both of those because they're smart people who like Warhammer and want to talk about it. Uh, but I appreciate you coming and listening to my thoughts, even though there are more well-known people out there talking about Warhammer. Um, just the first very high-level take. I'm very happy with this. I think it's moving in a good direction. Uh, this definitely gives me hope that uh, they'll continue doing a good job uh, with balance updates and, and moving the game in a good direction. So this maybe didn't hit everything, as hard as some people wanted uh, and left some things untouched and maybe even buffed one or two things that didn't need buffing. Uh, <laughs> Zinch, um, which, you know, everyone's talking about and panicking over on AOS coach and yada yada. By everyone, I of course mean, you know, like four people. It's easy to, it's very easy to see like people chatting in a Discord and be like, oh my gosh, everyone thinks this is horrible. And then you kind of realize it's like the same three people who are always constantly chatting in that chat and it's not the whole community it's you know a couple people who are up in arms so uh, i try to remember that and i try to take the the online reactions with with a little grain of salt um one other thought about that i feel like a lot of times i i, I feel like through fourth edition uh already i feel like the people who are most like doom and gloom the sky is falling have been the people who play on tabletop simulator a lot um and i feel like that is because this is this probably isn't controversial. I feel like it's, you know, obviously on Tabletop Simulator, you don't have to buy and paint all the models. You can play whatever you want. So everybody playing on Tabletop Simulator can immediately play the most filthy list they can possibly come up with, with all of the most broken toys. And if all you do is play Tabletop Simulator every week and not games in person, I, I can see how you would have a much uh, more pessimistic view of 4th edition right now. Whereas... Somebody like me and, prob you know, the vast majority of people who play Warhammer with their friends, uh, you know, in their basement or go to some local tournaments and stuff. It, my, my experience with 4th edition has been great so far. I'm loving the game. I have not played anything incredibly filthy. I talked in, pre in a previous video, um, the first GT I went to um, with my bad Stormcast list. I was very salty about having to play Ogres twice. But now having played some more, I'm like, ah, ogres aren't that bad now that I'm used to the addition and I'm playing some lists of my own that are a little better. Um, and yeah, I mean, I look, I'm spoiled. I haven't, I still haven't played Night Haunt despite being at multiple GTs. I still haven't played against Lumineth despite being at multiple GTs. So that certainly helps, you know, my opinion of, of the goodness of the addition and all that. But anyway, whole point is I was already pretty happy with fourth. I was like, I know there's things that are imbalanced. There's some things that need to get toned down and changed. And I was I had high hopes for this balance update, and here we are, and I feel like my, my hopes have been met. Um, this is supposed to be a quarterly thing, so I think it's great that they didn't, like, hammer things too, too hard. Um, I think there could have been some overreaction, potentially, where they nerfed something into the ground, and, you know, something went from 58% win rate to, like, 45 and it's like oh well we swung way too far in the wrong direction or like buffed something hugely and then you have a new problem i feel like this is a good level of change where they made totally reasonable changes probably some still things need a little bit more of a nerf and some things still need a little bit more of a buff but like we can we can see how this pans out over the next couple months and they can adjust from there and like it's progress um so, like, what am I most excited about here? I, I think all of the manifestation rules are a good change. Um, you know, people have been, like, very doom and gloom. Oh, the only, you know, they, they have to introduce points for manifestations. There's no other way they're going to balance them. Um, but I think this, I think these are good changes. You know, you can't, 
you can't do the banish and then resummon your own manifestation in your turn trick to like reposition it somewhere new which is nice uh the plus one to banish things when there are multiple enemy manifestations out is great um so like you know if your if your opponent has three you know shackles sun and grave tied out you're gonna be at plus two to just you know unbind any of those banish <laughs> i better get my words right you're gonna be at plus two to banish whatever the first thing you want to banish is so like i think that's a great balance patch and um God, i don't know wild i don't know why wild form was ever on purple sun and ravenax but now you can just straight up banish purple sun and it's gone instead of this bullshit where oh i, I rolled to banish it and i did six wounds and it's still sitting there and i still have to deal with it somewhere else so that Never, never should have had wild form on those in the first place. I don't know why. But great. We're where, we're where we should be on that now. And, um, you know, Grave Tide going to an 8 to cast. That's that's a good little uh, nerf to that. I, I never really saw people doing Maelstrom anyway. And when they did, it never really did anything. So whatever on Maelstrom. Uh, priority target. Everybody thought this was just going to go to only melee. Um and instead now it was a i, th I think I, I i like the nerf i think um what they did instead so instead of being anything in your general's regiment it only affects your general and the honor guard and then it is only effective within 12 inches so it, it's still available for range and attacks but you have to be you have to be in the danger zone right before you can use it um with your shooting so Giselles from 24 inches or something, you know, are not not getting prior target. Um, yeah, some of this, yada, yada. Covering fire. Oh, thank goodness. You can all at defense covering fire now. This is so stupid. Um, so so these two, you know, the prior target and covering fire are both a pretty good nerf to shooting, um, especially longer range shooting. Um, so that is, that is very nice. Um, is it enough? I'm not sure. I haven't played against like the Caleb, you know, Zinch six, twelve Skyfires, whatever. Uh, I haven't played against Giselles, um, so it, my meta, you know, I've been playing pretty low shooting as it is, um, but I it, that seems to to help a lot. Um, yeah, and then getting into the um, getting into the factions. First of all, I just want to say it is wild that they dropped Kragnos hundred points. And the only thing he lost was 3d6 charge in the enemy turn. That's kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we're going to see a little more Kragnos now. That is a that is a huge points change. Uh, I I hadn't really seen Kragnos anyway, so like I don't know. Um, yeah, whatever. I, I don't know if people are going to take him now that weren't taking him then. I don't know how good he was before. It seemed not very good since I hadn't seen him. But dropping 100 points, probably see him now. Um my big boy Karzai also dropped. I, it, wild to see the, one of the big dragons below 500 at 40, 480 is Karzai now. Um, so yeah, so, some of the thing you know, some big guys got some points drops. Um, yeah, let me just let me just talk about. Let's see. Let me talk about the top armies real quick. I think so. The night haunt changes. Um, where are you? Death, 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 death. Here we go. Right. So Night Haunt, first of all, it seems like they messed up the wording on this again. They didn't tag it with um, once per turn army <laughs> or once per turn at all. Um, so the they were very clear in the article that the intent here was that um, Death Stalkers only affects one unit instead of the entire army. So that's the battle trait in the battle formation that everybody takes, where currently... Before this, your whole army gets just run and retreat and charge, which is bonkers. Um, now it's supposed to be only one unit per turn. Uh, I don't know if that's enough of a nerf to um, that w that we'll see the other regiments. Um, I actually I'm not sure what the other ones are. Three here, yeah. Three heroes near a hero once per turn do damage. Eh. Ward next to black coaches, eh, maybe not horrible. Translocation. So, 
yeah i don't know i could see us i could see seeing this again or seeing this more now um where you can teleport something every turn um especially since the dreadblade harrows got knocked down a little bit so the the other big thing Thank goodness. Thank goodness again. Uh, this The Dreadblade Harrows now can only teleport in your movement phase instead of both movement phases. Um, I think these two things together are great. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think Nighthaunt's not going to be nearly as problematic now with these two nerfs. Um, I think... Let's see. Where is, where's the whole document? Um... They, they also got, yeah, so so those two nerfs, and then they got, you know, plus 10 on the Revenants and the Dread Scythe Herodons, and plus 20 on the Hex Wraiths. So, like, you know, solid point increases on the units that you're taking multiple of and reinforcing, so you're probably dropping, like, a small hero or a 10-man worth of unit there um, in a roster now. So I, I'm optimistic that, like, Night Haunt, and, it, and I think this is going to be my, I think this will be the theme of, this is kind of my takeaway, is my prediction. I think the armies that were at the top, that got toned down a little bit, are still going to be at the top. But, like, Night Haunt, you know, we're at, like, 60 plus percent win rate. Um, I have the feeling this is going to bring them down to, like, you know, the mid to high 50s, maybe mid 50s, which is, like, a strong but reasonable thing, right? And then I think the armies at the bottom largely probably didn't get enough so i think i think and you know and busting some of the outliers was probably their main goal here um so i i think the outliers got toned down a little bit but the armies that were still at the top are going to still be at the top and the armies at the bottom are probably still going to be near the bottom like nurgle don't think got enough um night haunt i think these are great nerfs but they're still going to be good um yeah, I mean, just this. Just Discorporation only teleporting in your movement phase instead of both is just such a massive, massive nerf and quality of life for every opponent. Um, I watched I watched a game at Nova between... I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched a little bit of the end of a game at Nova between a 4-0 Night Haunt and Jacob, who was 4-0 with Cruel Boys, where... Jacob, the Cruel Boys player, literally lost that game due to this rule. Like, he lost the game, as far as I could see, because in, like, the last turn, he could not move off of the two primary objectives to go get a tactic because there were two units of Harrows left. Essentially, the only thing that the Nighthaunt player had left on the board was two units of Harrows, and Jacob could not both get a tactic last turn and stop those arrows from teleporting to take back two primary objectives. And, like, that was the difference. Like, that ended, you know, that ended with the Night Haunt with a very small victory. So, like, this, I feel like this is really going to cut a few percentage points down where, like, things, close things were going to the Night Haunt player, right? Or, like, a big win for the Night Haunt might go to a small win. Literally just because of this, because... Now you can move off your objectives in your turn, and they're not just going to auto-get them, right? It just, it's huge. It's huge. Um, anyway, I think they're still going to be good. Um, Lumineth, again, like, Night Haunt I hadn't played, but, like, obviously they were really good, and I'd seen a couple games where they were being played. Um, Lumineth, I have even less expertise on, expertise on Lumineth right now. Um, so I have no idea if these nerfs and the point hits were enough. Um, like the Shining Company, if you don't charge and you don't get your five up mortals, you don't get the minus, I'm oh, sorry, you only get it if you don't charge and you don't get the five up mortals. So, slight nerf, I guess, to their survivability, losing that minus one to hit, and then, um, they got some, they got some decent point hikes, um, oh, sorry, sorry for giving anyone vertigo here, so yeah, so like, Calgrave went up, Enlightener went up, Spirit of the Wind went up, the Wind Chargers went up 20, so, like, the Tom Guan list with 30 Wind Chargers and three, of, you know, two of these plus, I guess, a special character one, I mean, that's 60, 80 points in that list, so at that point, like, you're you're having to drop something. John Riders, I 
I've, I've seen more of the Hurricane list than the, the Dawn Riders, but I've also, I think the other thing you do, sorry, God, man, no, no talky good tonight. Um, I'm trying to say is the 10 Dawn Riders plus the Lord Regent is a nice little module that punches real hard. So like that went up 40 points as well. Um, supposedly the River Blades were a little problematic. I know even less about them, but anyway, point is, Pretty much all the strong Lumineth lists are probably going to be dropping a unit or dropping a character to a smaller character or something like that or losing a reinforce on something. So, like, I, I, I think that's I think that's a great place to start with nerfs, right? Lose 100 points off the good lists. You have to drop something. You have to rejigger things a little bit. Um, yeah, so those were kind of the two strongest things. I haven't... So I actually haven't seen, or I didn't notice, um, anybody go through the city's changes. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised. Okay, so it looks like cities and um, OBR and then probably Zinch. Were all three, like, very strong armies just beneath, like, kind of the tier down from Lumineth and Nighthaunt. And it seems like all three of those only got buffs, really. Um, so cities just got some things that nobody uses going down in points, which I don't think matters at all. I don't. I don't think you're probably going to see any changes in like the good cities lists because they weren't using any of these, and I don't know that these point changes affect things enough uh, to, you know, I, I, I don't think ten points on flagellants or, you know. 20 points on a War Hydra are replacing the value you get out of a Dwarf Hero and a unit of 20 Hammers, right? Or um, Callus and Toll didn't change at all, so like they're not going away. The Drake Spawn Knights didn't change at all, go up in points or anything. So the good the good cities lists that I've seen have no changes. Uh, so cities are going to be very strong. By the same token, OBR is also kind of sitting at that power level it felt like right now right below night haunt lumineth kind of at the top uh and wildly they only got point drops um for myself so i i finally talked about this in other videos like i took nagash um obr to nova i have not i've never i'd never bought catacross i've been playing obr for like two years catacross is the only thing i didn't own finally broke down and bought Karatek bought Catacross, um, and holy shit, he's so good. He, he, Catacross is amazing. So a lot of the good lists you were seeing, um, well, <laughs> obviously none of the lists you were seeing that anybody took need to change anything because nothing went up in points. Um, but there's, there's some very good, um, very good OBR lists centered around Catacross and a bunch of, um, horses, a bunch of Death Riders, or, um, like Michael Roche at uh, Nova did Catacross with uh, four Archai and ten Death Riders, along with Vok Morshin, who actually got a points drop, which is shocking. Um, so yeah, OBR, just like Cities, uh, strong builds, obviously didn't get hit at all. Honestly, probably the weaker builds didn't get enough to see them. Um Although I will say I was already tempted to mess around with uh, Soul Reaper in a list um, because it has the minus one to wound aura in combat and it can also chain activate um, infantry and the Morgasts are infantry. Um, so I... I I still want to play around with, and now I'm more tempted because of the points drop, um, a Soul Reaper with four Morgast Archai. Just Soul Reaper kind of sitting sitting in the middle of them, um, handing out minus one to wound. If they're targeting, you know, they're targeting the Soul Reaper, he's kind of behind things, you're probably not getting all that many attacks, and then you're not attacking the Archai, and it just kind of presents that problem of which part of this do I try and crack, right? It's kind of the same issue with... Um, Catacross standing next to three Immortus Guard. You know, like you want to kill Catacross, but you almost have to kill the three Immortus Guard first. Um, and if you are in combat with the Immortus Guard and they're standing next to Catacross, you know, you're in combat with Catacross and he slaps pretty hard too. So, like, 
you just kind of have a couple things that are presenting big problems to the enemy. Um, and yeah, I'll, I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive on OBR soon, maybe. Well, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how much there is to talk about the fact that Catacro stands out plus one, excuse me, plus one to save to three units. And then you have multiple things sitting on a two up save. And that's just a hard nut to crack for anybody. It's not that complicated. Um, and then of course, everyone is just panicking and pooping themselves over the fact that Zinch uh, was already very strong. Caleb obviously got best general, went 8 0 at Nova, um, and also just did a video deep dive um, with AOS Coach uh, about Zinch, which you should go watch. Uh, I've only watched half of it, it was very long, it was like two and a half hours. Um, but that's worth a watch. And yeah, the, the only things, I mean, Horrors went up 10. And the Lord of Change went up 20, but they also got a bunch of points drops. Does that mean you're going to take any of these? I don't know. I'm not a Zeech player. But they also got buffs on one of their Endless spells, and they got a buff on their battle trait where they hand out Burning, where now Burning can't go away. So if you roll a 1 or a 2, it doesn't get extinguished. It just stays on everything until they heal or rally or whatever. Um... So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people panicking about Zinch not really getting nerfed and in fact getting buffed slightly when they were already one of the best in the game. Um, so yeah, I would I would kind of put Zinch, OBR, Cities as this tier of already very good, didn't get any nerfs, maybe actually got a few buffs, and like, I would not be shocked if you have Lumineth, Night Haunt, those three kind of sitting very strong at the top of the rankings you know come a month from now uh is the, my prediction um other armies i play so i'm not going to talk about every army um so i play stormcast i feel like it's not even worth really considering these changes and trying to make them work and stuff now with the book so close um I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if like these are the points these things are just going to be in the book, but like they're getting new units, they're probably getting a few new rules. Although Skaven didn't get that many new rules, um, I will say. So I'm very positive about this balanced patch. Um, I was kind of down on the Skaven book just because I I kind of expected there to be additional like artifacts and heroic traits and things like that to kind of flesh out the armies in the books uh and they just kind of stuck with the three artifacts three traits kind of the same battle formations so it like it really didn't flesh that that out at all um it did add the two new um armies of renown so it kind of seems like that is how they're fleshing out and adding more options to the books um which I don't love. I like the armies of Renown let you get you, you know, they, they, they let you get to pick a different, a slightly different style of army that you're going to play, but you're still kind of locked into those styles that they've defined. Whereas being an old school fantasy player, like I really enjoy the granularity of having a bunch of little decisions and how I'm going to build my list and build my army. So like, I mean, I guess it's fair to say that like, you always had one or two artifacts and traits that were like obviously better than the others. So was it really a choice? I don't know, but like, we'll see. We'll see with the Stormcast book um, and the Slaves book is coming out after that. Um, if they improve on that anymore or if it's, if it is just going to be the armies of Renown. So anyway, all of that is to say I had a moment where I was very tempted to look at Karazai again you know, he went down 20 points uh, to 480. And the other big change with him, um, Iron Gutsman already said this in his video, so I'm sorry, I'm plagiarizing, but I had the same thought because I've been waiting for Praetors. So they changed Praetors so that you can actually bodyguard a hero with their special ability if they are in reserve. Whereas previously, Core rules say you can't use an ability if you're not on the table, right? If you're in reserve. Um, so you always had to start Karazai and the Praetors on the board. And of course, Karazai is much faster than the Praetors. So you had to like 
have a teleport or something to have them keep up with Karzai. Now you can just run Karzai up, drop in the Praetors next to him, and just be in the center of the board with your bodyguarded giant dragon. So, like, I don't know. That is that is tempting for me to, to mess with Stormcast lists, but I think I need to just wait until the book comes out. Um, I'm a little shocked Grand Hammers didn't go down at all. Little Annihilators with Shields went down to 170. Because these just, like... I don't know. Maybe I should give them a chance. Maybe I'm missing something. But the whole drop them in and get a rerollable charge is gone, and they just seem bad with 4-inch move, and they're just not going to do anything. I don't know. I still down on Annihilators. Um, yeah, I, Vigilers went down. Chariot went down. I'm still da I, I'm still negative on the Chariot, having used it, because its whole shtick needs a command point. I said this before. It seems so cool to power through thing, but like you need a CP every turn to make it work, and that sucks. Uh, Vigiler is going down is interesting. I I was also very tempted today. I was kind of looking. Um, I feel like there's maybe like a Vanguard Chamber list that's more shooting focused that could work with this. Um, especially I'm thinking right now. Um, so I'm going up to the Wicked Dicey Fall Retreat. Uh, in about a month, in October, uh, five-person team tournament. So, like, I feel like having a one shooty list in your team comp is good. Um, <laughs> I was especially thinking about shooting when the Dreadblade Harrows could move and teleport in both turns because you at least, you know, range gives you a little more option to kind of zone those out. But that is not quite as necessary now, which is great. So yeah, Stormcast, I don't know. Still kind of negative on Stormcast. Um, I already talked about OBR. OBR is amazing right now. Magikin, like I said, they, they pretty much just got point drops. And I don't know... I don't know that, like, one extra unit getting added in to Nurgle solves any of their problems. So, like, I didn't... Yeah, just 100, 120 extra points in the list is good. Maybe you get an extra 10 pack of Plague Bearers, right? Or an extra unit uh Rotmare Creed or something. And maybe that's enough to swing the tables, turn the tide. But I I remain skeptical. Um, Skaven. Skaven just go to the points in the book. All right. So the Cavs Army I play is Slaves. Um, they did get some... So, so the point, all right, point changes are interesting, right? Because things going up or down 10 or 20 points affects armies way differently between an army where you have 10 or 12 units, and I'm including like reinforces and stuff there, versus an army that has like five units, right? So, like, slaves. Common slaves list you might see, a very strong list, was Bellicor, a Sorcerer Lord, 2x6 Varengard, and two units of Furies. Right? That's six units. It's very efficient. The units hit very hard. You've got the Furies go to flanks. It's just very, it's a very compact, tight list. Gets everything you want in it. There's no... There's no room for, what am I trying to say? There's no wiggle room. That's just like, it is the optimized list that you can fit in 2,000 points. Now, of course, Bellicor went up 30, Varengard went up 10, and Furies went up 10. Where's Varengard? Yeah, Varengard went up 10, Furies went up 10. So suddenly, let's see, 30, 70... Basically, you have to drop a unit of Furies from that list, right? And suddenly, like, in a unit, sorry, in, a, in an army with six units, having to drop one unit is massive, right? Like, there's no wiggle room where you, like, you know, it, it, it's not like you can, it's not like your points went up and you've got 12 units and maybe you just don't reinforce your Fusiliers or something, right? Or, like... You drop one of your seven units of monster hunters in Crowboys or something, right? 
not that their points went up and you need to. I'm just saying, like, a, an army with lots of units at, where, like, the points are lower for every unit has a lot more list building room where you can adjust things slightly if points change, and then it's still going to function in the same way. Whereas here, you know, if you wanted to keep Belcor and the 2x6 Varengard, you're dropping a unit of Furies, and suddenly, suddenly you don't have to take the flanks, right? Without having to send a unit of Varengard off to a flank, which is now instead of committing 100 points to go take one flank, you're committing 640 points to go take a flank. And that's awful. And th that might not be the position the Varengard need to be in, right? I talked in my Nova video, the Slaves player I played against, like his Varengard had to go take the flank turn one. I didn't have to. He chose to have him go take the flank turn one. And that kind of lost him the game, because then the Varengard were just out of position, and I got to clean up things elsewhere, and then deal with the Varengard later. So it's an army that is so unit... Um, the word unit tight i don't know small number of units gets affected by these point changes much more um now the way the points work out it's it's actually it works out very well that you can just drop bellicor actually in that list and uh insert abraxia uh, so my buddy roger is taking slaves to that team tournament in october and he was probably going to run that list i just talked about um and he's like all right well I take out Bellicor, and I swap in Abraxia, and then I have a third hammer, and I'm missing out on the Strike Last shenanigans, and obviously the Bellicor ability, and two casts, but like, then it just kind of becomes a move forward and smash list, <laughs> even more than it already was. Um, but maybe that's fine, especially uh, in a team tournament, where you can pair it into something that you just want to go smashy into. Uh, but yeah, so so slaves. Um, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> again, like I didn't own Catacros. I also don't own Bellicor. I'm a hipster, so like I don't care that Bellicor went up. Um, I don't know. I I would love to use a Chaos Lord because I have a cool conversion for it. Um, but in a world where like Arcane Tome doesn't exist, I still don't think you ever take a Chaos Lord over a Sorcerer Lord to hand out five up wards and like just have a cast. In your list, um, I, I honestly thought Demon Prince would go down in points, not up ten, because I want to use him, and he's like almost good, but like not quite amazing and good. Um, it especially hurts. Like, I, I, I played. I played the Demon Prince. Sorry, I played Slaves and the Demon Prince at a at an RTT like two weekends ago, and. I swear to you, I did not hit, like, a single three up for his ability, <laughs> like, the whole tournament to, to buff things. Um, you know, I, I probably hit one or two, but, like, there was, there was at least one game where I just failed, like, four or three ups for his ability. And then it's like, cool, I have a flying guy who's 300 points who, like, doesn't do anything else. Which, of course, is an exaggeration. Um, but, yeah, again, like, so... Like, these point changes are small, but again, like, a unit, you know, what my I was playing 10 Chosen and 10 Varengard, so there's 40 points. I was probably at 1970, so suddenly I'm having to, like, completely mess with my list, right? Like, I, I have to completely switch things around, because, you know, it, it's not like you can, it's not like you can just not reinforce your Chosen, like, oh yeah, that frees up 260 points, but suddenly I'm not playing a unit of 10 Chosen, right? If I still want 6 Varengard and 10 Chosen, like, other things need to change. Um, I will say the Chariot is tempting now at 100 points, actually. Um, just because I think I had a list. So my list with, um, my list with the Demon Prince and... A uh, Gaunt Summoner and like the Chosen and things. I think I was at like 1970 and it went up 40. Um, so I dropped. I think I was able to drop like a unit of five knights for a chariot and a unit of furies, and and I was at exactly 2,000 points. Um, so yeah, this like these changes are enough that 
you're going to have to mess with lists, right? Which is cool. Um, I think that's <laughs> that's nicer than these weird like OBR changes where they just drop some points on things that are bad and the good lists don't have to change anything. But maybe you have to maybe you have to swap something in. I don't know. It feels like slaves are still in a good spot. Slaves were also um, slaves were also at like fifty three, like low mid fifty percent win rates. I think um, so. Also in that tranche of like strong armies that will probably still be strong. Um, so yeah, they. I don't know. I feel like they have a little bit. They have less in their toolbox than like OBR. So I think they'll still be strong, but still below OBR and things. Uh, I already talked about OBR. I also play Cruel Boys and... I don't know. The, the roster on Cruel Boys is so small. I don't think any of this really moves the needle on anything. Um... The good lists that were having success in Cruel Boys were a bunch of monster killers, which I still don't want to buy and paint, and a, you know a bunch of Bolt Boys with a couple heroes. Uh, so yeah, I, I I don't think this I don't think this changes anything on the Cruel Boys front either. Like, I wouldn't have been shocked to see monster killers go up to like one forty. Or 150, right? Like, I was kind of expecting nerfs to this. Uh, I wouldn't have been shocked to see Bolt Boys go up to 120. Um, and even if they had, like... Again, you know, this is what I was saying. When you've got seven units of Monster Killers and three units of Bolt Boys, it's real easy to just, like, drop one of your 3x6 Bolt Boys to 1x3 where it's real easy to drop one unit of monster killers and your army still functions exactly the same you just have slightly less in it but here I, on the flip side maybe maybe these little point drops means that somebody will drop a unit of monster killers for um a marsh crawler or something i don't know or like the problem the problem with hero point drops this edition is that you are still paying a drop to take another hero so like i really don't i don't think i think a lot of these point drops we're seeing on heroes is not really going to be impactful because a lot of like the heroes people are taking for large part are being taken because of what they do not just because of the point values that they're at right like it's not like what am I doing? <laughs> why did I why did I scroll away from there? Um Like it, it's not like you're gonna drop your Swamp Call a Shaman with Pot Grot, who has the staff for plus one to cast, and like a monster killer unit to take the Nash Tooth, right? Now that like his points drop twenty points. Like you're not you're not changing up your list to take the Nash tube because he's 20 points cheaper or well I mean maybe Kragnos at minus 100 but like or Scum, or Scumdrek right for minus 20 because the point of taking the Shaman isn't that he's 120 points and he fits the point is that you have your caster and he's a two cast and he's got plus one um maybe I don't know Crow Boys Crow Boys in, with this MSU style, kind of doesn't care if they go first or second. So, like, maybe you see somebody drop a unit of monster killers and you take the Nash Tooth. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I, I hope that point made some sense. Um, like, things in cities, right? Like, let's go all the way back up to cities. Um, like, oh boy, the dragon, you know, the dragons went down 20 points. But what roles, what roles are of the dragons filling that you want to lose something else in that good cities list, right? Like, what what were you missing that a dragon's going to do for you? Not probably nothing, right? Like, do you, do you want to mess up your combo of the hammers and the dwarf character to take a dragon and lose your like ridiculous anvil? Probably not. Um. I don't know. Maybe people, maybe people get more creative than I'm giving them credit for, but 
I don't know. Maybe we see a bunch of steam tanks again. They went down 10 points. Who knows? Um, I will say one. Let's see. What other, what other changes was I actually excited about? Soul Blight. I don't know that much about. I've been tempted to run Soul Blight. Just starting from the Cursed Cities box. Um, they got some adjustments. I haven't played Soul Blight yet. So I don't know. Um, Gits. Um, I don't know. Stuart Iron Gutsman was saying one of his videos, Goblin Palooza is like the broken thing that you take lots of and they didn't change. Um, trolls, trolls were real good. Trolls needed a hit and they got a hit. So like three by six rock guts just went up, what, 120 points? Um, so great. <laughs> That's definitely, you're going to need to change something in your list when it goes up 120 to like 150 points. Um, so maybe that's, you know, I don't know, maybe you go down to two by six rock guts and then you uh, add in some shooters or something. That's, the, yeah, I feel like the gets overall, like these changes are good in that the things that were kind of too strong got a significant hit to the point where you're going to have to change up your list a little bit. Um, same with like Luminef, uh, and then things like OBR. I'm like, what? What are you? What are we doing here? <laughs> things like Cruel Boys. Like, I I don't think you're seeing any list changes with those. Um, Iron Jaws. Pretty positive about all of these points drops, um, along with the um, the change to the Wog. Uh, so the Wog now they can do once per game with each hero they have, uh, which is cool. So like, you have three or four heroes, right? Um, there's probably, you know, in a game of Warhammer, probably turns two to four are the ones that are really important that you're fighting in and are going to matter. So you essentially now, if you're positioned right with your heroes, you're not going to have your WOG every turn that matters, right? Turns two to four, um, in your turns. So that's awesome. You know, plus one attack where you want it in a bubble three turns is amazing. Uh, and these points drops, I'm hoping we see Iron Jaws do better, uh, especially, I don't know, maybe, I, don't know. I was going to say especially like the infantry based, but Gruntos went down 10 points. I don't know. Ragers down points. Yeah, I don't know. The, the Tusk Boss at 280, I do love me a big pig. Anvil Smasher dude at 180, went down 30, uh, you know, putting, potentially putting Crit Mortals on like 20 Ard Boys or something, doesn't sound bad. Um, we'll see, that's exciting. Um, hopefully we see them doing a little better. Ogres, Ogres, I think there's still good lists here. Um, Gluttons went up 30, I'm not shocked by that at all. Uh, a couple people thought it was a little harsh, but like gluttons were just very, very efficient. Um, Iron Blaster down 20. I don't know. I don't know how the Iron Blaster is these days. Slaughter Master up 10, Butcher up 10. That's fair. So like, yeah, just the glutton spam with, with wizards got hit and the big guys went down a little bit. Um, and Kragnos, of course, down 100. Maybe we see Kragnos Ogre lists. Um, I made my buddy Nick a list today because he was taking kind of the glutton spam. He was he was planning to take the glutton spam to that tournament um, in October, the team tournament. So the list I whipped up real quick for him was now, so instead of like two butchers or two, sorry, instead of two butchers and a slaughtermaster or two slaughtermasters and a butcher and like <laughs> 36 gluttons, um, you can still fit like Butcher Slaughter Master with like 2x8 Iron Guts instead of 2x12 uh, Gluttons. And then um, still have room for 12 Gluttons in there, as well as like an Ice Brow Hunter and Frost Sabers. And like that feels pretty good with like the 2x8 Gluttons who can double fight and dish out a lot of damage. So I think there's still Ogre lists in here. Um, Seraphon. All right, this is already getting longer than I wanted. Um, last change, la last army I'll talk about changes. Um, 
I was a little surprised that Seraphon didn't get a points hike on the Hunter's Wanchi. Uh, just because every... every I, I, I don't think I've seen a Seraphon list without... Probably without two Hunters of Wanchi, which I think is the correct decision. Um, so they... I, I was very... Yeah, sorry. I was very surprised that the Bulla Wanchi guys did not get a points hike. I would not have been shocked to see them go to, like, 110. Um, I Starseer, everybody takes. Not shocked there. I was a little surprised to see the Scarvet on Agrodon go up 10. They fixed they fixed his once per game, like, at a rage to the Agrodons. But I, I still wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't seeing people take him. So I'm surprised, surprised that went up a little bit. Nobody's going to take an old blood on foot. That doesn't matter. Uh, these other things probably don't matter at all. Uh, Agrodon Lancers went up 10. Source Guard went up 10. So, like, I, I, I'm i thinking of Sor uh, Seraphon as my next army. Um, and I had a list I was kind of aiming for with 2x6 Agrodons, a Starseer, a Slan, 2x5 Hunters of Huanchi uh, with Bullas, 5 Hunters and 5 Chargers. In terms of Raptodons. Oh, Hunters went down 10. That's interesting. Um, I didn't notice Raptodon. Hunters went down 10. Um, right. So, like, that list was now slightly over because of the Starseer and the Lancer Agrodon um, points hike. But I had a unit of five Sora's Guard, and I just dropped that down to a third unit of Hunters of Huanchi <laughs> with Starstone Bolas. And I'm like, I'm just like, Games Workshop is do you know what you've done? Like, is this really what you want? Is for me to just take more Hunters of Wanchi with Starstone Bolas because they're amazing? I don't think this is what you want. <laughs> but here we are. Um, so yeah, I, I think that list is still amazing. I think that list is still real good. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I'm still excited to pay, play, um, play Seraphon. I think they're in a very good place while not being, like, unfair or feeling too bad. Um... Other than that, I do think the Hunters of Wanchi spam uh, can feel pretty bad, where they can deep strike and then... I mean, first of all, deep striking is obviously amazing into the backfield to pressure back objectives, get take the flank, take their land, etc. Um, but it's also just one of the best debuffs in the game is minus one charge dice, so... I don't know. It, I'm a little... I'm surprised they didn't go up, like I said. Um... I expect to see Seraphon continue to do pretty well. I think they're a solid army. Um, yeah, if you play one of the armies I didn't talk about, sorry. I don't know all the armies. I don't play all the armies. Um, again, just the top level uh, takeaway for me is I'm very positive about these changes. I'm stoked. I was like list building again today. Uh, I'm excited to play. I have a little RTT coming up on Saturday that I can only assume that we're going to use the new changes because uh, lists are not due until Friday. Um, and yeah, and I'm, and I'm stoked for this Wicked Dicey hosted team tournament uh, up in Massachusetts uh, in a month. I'll, I'll probably talk a little bit about that in a video. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I continue to promise this like tournament prep video for, for tips and about, about going to a tournament, how to prep for it. Um, and I will continue to tease that because this is not that video. Um, but yeah, this was this was exciting and timely, so I had to talk about this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed some of these thoughts. If you think I'm a dumbass or a genius, go ahead and tell me in the comments. Um, I, I've got a couple people commented on some past videos. I love it. Um, please continue. Makes me feel like I'm not just shouting into the void here. Um, and yeah, take it easy. Get some games in. Play good Warhammer. Love y'all.